All right. Good morning. All right. We are back at it. Hope that uh, you are coming from a deep sense of gratitude today. And uh, I'm just going to unmute here, Miss Erin Mailer. So excited to be with her, one of my favorite people. All right. How are you, young lady? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Good. So good to be with you. So uh, if those of you who don't know, Erin Mailer has uh, done a couple of things. One, she has served on our leadership team for uh, a number of years. And when I first met Erin uh, Mailer, uh, she lives in the Orem, Utah area, Utah County, Happy Valley, right? <laughs> BYU, uh, uh, you know, you can't say even the University of Utah uh, in that area. Uh, otherwise, you just might get swarmed by a bunch of uh, BYU Cougar fans. I don't know. But, uh, in fact, you're wearing your cougar blue, I can see. No. You know I'm a season ticket holder at the <laughs> University of Utah. You know that, right? Actually, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I we, did not know that. Game. That's great. Every game. All right. That's good. Because you know what? That that we always try to we try to always put the Danette Grant such a fan of the Y that we have to always make sure we in fact Sam Bell decorated her whole office in, in University of Utah uh, attire. See, there she goes. She's already said, go cougars. She's always the first person to <laughs> to chat with us, so that's great. Uh -huh. First of all, there's a chat box if you guys don't know, so there's questions that you wanna ask of Erin, but I love her journey. One, uh, she's got, how many kids do you have? Four. four. Four kids, so four kids. When we first met, they were very, very young. Well, give us the ages of your kids right now. So they're, they're all spot. turning in the next couple months, so I'll have a 17-year-old, a 15-year-old, and two 11-year-olds in the next couple months. All right, all right. So. So when we first met, which uh, I guess was what, about maybe seven years ago, six, seven years ago, somewhere in there? Yeah, about. Somewhere in that, in that realm. But I just love the journey, right? And, and I was looking, I was reading some things that uh, I think you had put together and I think that we would put out. But I love the fact that when I first met you, you were certainly, you were on, you were on a team. Uh -huh. You were earning less than a hundred grand. Uh -huh. You were obviously selling real estate. And today, now you're one of the, the, the top agents in the company. And earning, you know, nearly what three, four hundred thousand dollars, right between there. Obviously, right. full-time mom, married, all of the responsibilities that you carry, and uh, it has just been so cool to to watch your journey, and to see what you've been able to do. So, with that, tell us just a little bit about you. Beyond, uh, hey, I'm a mom, and hey, I am a, a great businesswoman. What else is uh, there to know about Aaron Mailer? Um, well, one of the first things you'll find out when you chat with me is I grew up in Seattle, Washington. So yes, That's I'm right. in Happy Valley now, but I still, <laughs> I've been here longer than I was in Seattle and I still talk about Seattle as being home. So my parents still live there. It's still very much a home for me. Um, love the Pacific Northwest. So, uh, That's gorgeous, especially if there's sunshine, there's nothing better. Right, and I love your background because you know. I know, I you know. Look, like I'm, I'm acting like I'm in the desert right this minute. I love it because I spend <laughs> almost every weekend in the desert right now. Um, I've yeah. I've really been um, passionate about investing the past couple of years, and we have a little Airbnb vacation home about 45 minutes outside of Moab. And so, right now, that's one of our current loves and passions as a family is just to go get away and be in that beautiful Red Rock country and have some. Oh yeah, time. gorgeous. So, yeah, that's so. great. I, you were telling me about that. That is so exciting. So there, there's a shout out. Anybody wants to go to Moab, they should be reaching out to you because they've got quite a nice place Absolutely. to stay if they can get get in your spot. Right. That's right. great. Well, yeah. so talk a little bit about just okay. So start, talk, let's talk first and foremost about your your career right now and okay. what does that look like? And with everything that you've taken on, right? We're in the midst of the virus. You know, who knows? There, you know, who, who really knows if there's going to be truly some openings and a little bit of uh, space that where we can, you know, even just uh, go to a, a restaurant, go to get a haircut. I mean, a lot of people keep asking me, is Utah or California much difference? And I think the main difference that I've seen ultimately has been just the movement of the government, right? The one minute right. that California is open as an essential business, the next minute the county, uh, the county officials change it and say, no, no, it's not. Then they turn it back on. And so some really deep highs and lows. Right. I think the fortunate thing is Utah specifically hasn't had that high and low, but right, all schools are canceled in both states. Uh, you know, restaurants aren't open, gyms aren't open, so many different things, and just that feeling of of fear. Right, there's people who are still yet to even come out of their home, and that they are incredibly, incredibly nervous. And then there's people who are like, you know what? 
I don't care. I'm just going for it and I'm going to go do it. And, and then all of that in between from angry to denial to bargaining, pointing fingers, angry at the government, angry at the state level, angry at the national level, federal level. I mean, it's a really interesting time. So talk about how you're running your business today. What does that look like for you? Well, you know, it's interesting because I feel like coming into 2020, like the word of 2020 was intention. You would see intention everywhere. Everyone was talking about this. Like it was just the trending word in 2020. Like everything was beautiful and hunky dory. Life was amazing. We'd had 10 years of growth in the economy and people are right. doing well financially. And it's like, oh, I'm just going to have this intention, which is I'm not trying to downplay that at all. I think it's a beautiful thing to have intention, right? But I feel like very quickly we've, we've kind of switched and the word that comes to my mind constantly right now is adaptation. How have you been willing right. to adapt? What have you done to adapt? Because, so my birthday is March 13th. So all of this that went down is like really time stamped for me because I think in terms of March 13th, it was a Friday the 13th, which it's like the fourth or fifth Friday the 13th birthday I've had. And that was the first day that my kids didn't go to school, right? So um, it's all kind of time stamped in that week, that, that second week of March, life changed drastically for everyone, you know? And, and for about three weeks, I, I finished up things that I had going on, but I didn't really have any new business for those first three weeks. And um, while it was, a, it's, it was really scary and really tragic and a lot of things that um, were happening in the world were certainly serious and, um, and, and awful for a lot of people. For me, those three weeks were some of the most beautiful time that I've had with my family. I found myself in a deep place of gratitude for this like gift that I had been given. And that's not to downplay the seriousness of what was going on in the world and to make light of it. But um, you know, George, for year, probably since the day you met me, I've been talking about balance. I just want balance. I want to be able to balance this all. And how do I do that? And I, I, there would be periods where I'm like, no, I think I'm balancing really well. And then a month later, I'm like, well, right. it all went to pot. I've realized I can do, I have four things on my plate and I can do about two really well at the same time. And the other two suffer. So, um, so for so, me- So how do, you, how do you handle then, the, then how do you handle, I, just, I, was just, I took a half- it's crazy. I just wrote a half, nearly a half a page of notes of just what you are saying. So thank you for what you're saying, because I have a saying in regards to balance. And I think this is an important statement here. A lot of people will say that. I know you and I have had many conversations regarding balance. And what I would say about balance to anyone is this, and that is, is that it is almost next to impossible to have any level of balance until you become, you know, just this, write this one down, until you become highly efficient in certain areas of your life. Right. And, and the three components, right? If you're having major chaos in the home front, it's gonna be very difficult to find balance because there's so much inefficiency. Uh, if there's major imbalance in regards to our health, it's almost impossible to get that into, into balance. And then also that's hard to get into balance, of course, if the business is all over the place, if it's not happening, if it's taking too much of your time, if it's not, if you're not efficient with your systems, your team, your individuals around you, the way you transact the deal, the way you set appointments, if there's not high levels of efficiency in those three corridors, economic relationship and our health, it is almost next to impossible to be balanced. So right. sometimes people claim they want the balance, right? But then the challenge is, is are they being efficient in the areas so that they truly can be, so that it's not all hands on deck when it comes to just their business, are all hands on deck because there is a major crisis in their health. Right. So for you, how, how do you how do, how have you created that? I mean, you've gone in the last two years, and one of the shout outs I, I know that you would make is that you one you you got a coach, mm -hmm. and one of the things I love is that you're one of the first people to sign up with our Everest Sales System Coaching. I know Judy Forden is your coach, and there's been like this huge growth as right. you've worked with with Judy on the coaching side of it. Absolutely. Speak to coaching for just a minute and, and why that's so important to you. Um, you know, I, it's funny. I just, someone called me yesterday to ask me these same questions. Um, he's looking into coaching. And so it's hard for me to express and quantify what the coaching does for me, but I'm going to try. Um, there were some definite pain points in my business. There's, there's always pain points. Once you figure out one thing, there's another thing you've got to figure out, right? Right. 
there were some pretty blaring pain points in the way I was operating my business when I started coaching. And I wasn't able to identify them on my own. And really, it's hard for someone else to have a conversation with someone else, and whether it's you or Matt or someone else in the office, without spending a lot of time in my business to understand where those pain points are. So I tell people it took about three months and I don't know if Judy would agree, but it, it, for me, it felt like it took about three months for me to kind of get comfortable with Judy, for us to find our groove as a, a coach and a, um, a student, but she helped me identify where some of those pain points were. Um, and then beyond that, that's kind of what we continue to do is we discuss my business. Um, she didn't ask me to change the way that I was running my business from a foundational principle, kind of what I run an SOI, sphere of influence based business. I work with past clients, referrals, friends, and family, and I prospect to those people. Um, so, you're, so you're maximizing your sphere at every level you right now sphere. can. I, okay. My coaching calls are on Friday. Every Friday, I have to have my tracking done and ready. If I didn't have a coach, I promise you, I would not be tracking my business. And I'm like, I have this like, class that I could teach to people. And it's the nerdiest real estate class you would ever attend. And it would be called understanding the math of your business is the key to success. And I'm right. like, it is a hundred percent the truth. If you well, know, I, I think, I think Tony Robbins said the language of business is the numbers. The language of business is. is finance. If you and, and Aaron, I can, I can appreciate that. I'm now like a bulldog in that arena because I remember I was like, Oh, whatever. It's all fine. Honestly, now I am like, where's my numbers? Where's my numbers? Where's my numbers? The numbers are a puzzle piece. And if you fit that puzzle together between your personal life and your, your personal financial life and your business life and what you're trying to accomplish, all of a sudden these arbitrary goals that you've been throwing out, like, oh, I want to sell 28 homes this year, you know? Well, why? What does that mean? And it's hard for people to quantify that. If you understand the numbers of what you're trying to accomplish in your life and, and what this tool, money, is going to do to propel you forward to accomplishing your goals, that is what will set you on the right course. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it's okay, because I didn't until I was about 39 years old, it took me about 39 <laughs> years old to stop screwing up financially in a massive way. So just reach out to me after and I'll explain it to you a little bit more, but um, that was one so, thing. So, so, so let's make sure we're clear. I mean, that one of the main things is really dissecting your numbers, recognizing where your business is coming from, you knowing that from a number standpoint, and I know who you are at your heart and soul. So there, mm -hmm. it's not that these, these things are just, a, sometimes the key here is to represent the numbers. I remember years ago as a young man, I learned, and some of you know this individual, and he was, uh, one of the, he was our president at one point uh, for the Everest Group and uh, Steve Forey. And I still remember Steve teaching me this one principle years and years ago, and it was this. He said, it is not a number. It is your stewardship and it is your accounting. And there's accountability to your life and to what you do and a stewardship to that. And so part of the numbers that we write down, as we all know, represent families, represent the, the, to us to be able to track how influential are we? How much of our stewardship are we really taking in? How accountable are we to ourselves, to our family, uh, to our team, to God? I mean, there, there's an accountability. That's why I love journals. There's a, it's a place to define your accountability. So I, I love what you're saying from that standpoint. So, so you would encourage someone, of course, to have a strategy session with totally. a Brandon Earl or one of our key people, correct? Because the people that know me would say, Aaron, what are you talking about? You don't care about the numbers. You don't care about the money. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. That's why I had to start caring about it. And that's why, you know, through working with Judy, we don't talk about that a lot, but it became blaringly obvious just in my conversations with her. That was something that I had to get on top of because it's not something that at heart I think about or care about in my business. So we're, if we're talking about coaching and the areas that she helped me take my business to the next level, it's that she got me thinking about things that I innately don't think about. I'm a person that cares about the people that I work with. I care about loving and being passionate about what I'm doing. I don't want to go work with someone um, or spend an afternoon with people that I'm not enjoying my time with them. That's just kind of right. core. I, I love helping people and that's what this is all about for me. And so love that. the coaching kind of brought in these other elements where it's like, I know this isn't who you are in your business, but it's vitally important for you to not get stuck in a rut in your business and not find yourself in a position where, you're stressed out because you're working like crazy 
because ends aren't meeting and you can't figure out why. And then you're feeling guilty because you're not at home with your family and you really want to be at home with your family. So it takes someone else coming in and forcing you to look at these things and understand concepts that aren't natural to you for you to be able to figure those things out and be able to, like, it really helped me be able to enjoy the things that I enjoy most about what I do because now I could say, well, this is where I want my focus to be. Okay, great. Well, this is how we need to figure everything out so that you can focus on your clients and have a great time when you're hanging out with them, showing homes, listing their houses, whatever you're doing. Um, right. So, so Aaron, let's, let's just, let's just, uh, we're going to switch gears in a second, but I, I have a, a, a question from uh, Miriam who is asking this question and she's saying, Hey, I don't quite understand still what you mean by the numbers. So if we were just to take basic numbers, right, we would be talking about, tracking how many people you speak to in a given day we'd be talking about how many of those convert into an appointment we'd be talking I'm about i'm not tracking I mean, that way i'm tracking um but that's one way you could hold on but that's one way that you could right that's that's you could do it i'm talking about like i would throw out a goal every year of the number of transactions i wanted to close and there was there was no meaning behind it it was just like well i closed 20 last year so i want to close 24 this year now when i set my goals I'll tell you my goals this year. I, I have a goal to close 40 transactions myself. And for the first time ever, I added a referral goal. I want to refer 20 clients that are referrals that maybe I don't have time to work with to other agents in my office who I can help grow their business and bless their lives. That's a huge thing for me is how am I going to bless the lives of others, right? So I added this 20 referral goal in and I know my average commission. I know what at the end of the year, what I should make based off of those numbers and I know in January where that money is going to go throughout the year. So it's a structure to, instead of like checks arbitrarily coming in and, you know, like, you know, where the money is going to go. So there's the, money's going there's in the right. So an agent for me, I would say, look, you should be tracking the daily numbers, the weekly numbers, the quarterly numbers Absolutely. from contacts to appointment ratios to the number of listings. And mm -hmm. now you're saying, let's expand it beyond that to where there's the financial side of, to Absolutely. your point, an arbitrary truck check comes in. It's like, woo, okay, I got some money in my pocket, right? And then, but you know where that money is going to go. Yeah. You know what you're going to do with it. I love it. It's fantastic. And I know the level. business will come because I've planned it. It's on my whiteboard. I know that business is coming in because I've planned it. I'm tracking it. If I'm off, it's so easy to adjust. Clients that used to slip through the cracks because I wasn't tracking them and forgetting about them aren't slipping through the cracks like they so used to. So your lead follow-up, you're tracking your lead follow-up? I track if someone refers me a client, then they get a little thank you card and a little gift card in the mail. It's right on my whiteboard with everything. I'm just keeping track of everything. And it's the first time once I started doing that, I stopped worrying about where the next piece of business was going to come from because right. it was right in front of me. And I was like, this is what I am going to do this year. And this is the why. And I don't know how it just, it continues to happen because I do my job every day and I track every day. And I know if I'm off track, I immediately adjust to get back on track. So let's, so one, th this is what's interesting. And I talk about this foundation. You've been around me for so many years. It sits on the office walls, this foundation of living a deep sense of pur a purpose in our lives, right? A purposeful life. We have, we set our goals, we, we, we build our plan, we're tracking our schedule, and then we move from mindset, skills, and discipline. And one of the things I love is that last component that I always list on that system is making sure that you're clear on what your system is, that your strategies to the business are in alignment with where you're trying to go. Not only once you get a check, but while you're in the business. So speak to this. What is a typical day? Because you've got four kids ranging in all different sides of ages. None of them have moved out of the home. You've got your husband. You've got you. You're trying to take the world by storm economically. You're trying to be, I know you, you're trying to be super mom. You're trying to serve effectively from a church standpoint for you, uh, religiously. I mean, what does it look like? What does a day look like in the life of Aaron Mailer? Okay, so I mean, a day right now is very different than a day was two months ago. I'm going to briefly touch on my like pre COVID-19 day. Okay. Because it made a huge difference in my life. And I'm going to tell you what my days are like right now. Pre COVID-19 about the same time that I started working with Judy, another adjustment that I made is I started going to the office at like eight 50, I'd get there about eight 15 in the morning, drop my kids off at school, which is a huge part of my day, taking that five minute drive in the car, 
to drop my kids off at school. They could ride the bus, but that drive was like critical to me to have that time with my kids in the morning, go to the office at eight, Monday through Thursday, leave the office by two so that I'm home when my kids get home from school. And then of course I'll have appointments at the, in the evenings throughout the week. Um, and then those hours, because they're- So hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you went ripped through that part. So one, you're working about, you're working in the, within the office about mm -hmm. six hours a day. About six hours a day, and they, days a week four days a week and then on a normal situation you would be then how, if i if i if i was asking you how many evenings in a in a week or a weekend you work give us give us a just give us an average no well, i would say what would you say would you say you're working two days a week three yeah, days a week two evenings a week there are busy weeks where certainly i'm working more um and then i would say i probably work two saturdays out of the month now and maybe a half saturday every once in a while i've got a long saturday but for the most part I'm down to about a half Saturday, a couple times a month. So, in right. the morning, and I book it in the and morning. And then what does your, and what does your Friday look like? What, when you say, is that a day um, that you do so not Friday, go into the office? My Friday is my day off, right? Okay, I love it. No, that's great. I always, I always great. end up doing work on my day off. It's not like I just stop answering the phone or emails, but I'm at home because of course I'm mom too. And I've got like groceries to, um, to worry about and, just needs at home that I've right. got to take I stuff. Yes. You know, I take an art class. I've taken this art class for three years. That was Friday mornings for two and a half hours, an oil painting class. And I'm always like, it's the one thing I do for myself and it's my sacred hours, you know, something for I me love it. on Friday. Um, and so of course I always joke that I'm like, oh, it's my day off, but I'm going to meet with a client, you know? So I just don't go so to the what, office. What, what is your, now what, now what is your schedule? What does it look like? How are okay. you handling? How are you handling the COVID-19 virus time? And, and we, we have to make sure we hear how you're impacting. And there's people who want to see your dry erase board, how you're working your day. But right. I don't know I if we'll get to all that. that. I don't know if we'll show that. But will, you look like you're in your beautiful backyard in your beautiful backyard. home. But, will, but, but um, just hold on. But just, just share, share what, is your, what does it look like today? And then I really want to make sure that how are you, how are you, cha how are you channeling the right mindset? How, and, and what advice would you give to those people that are really still struggling? So what does your schedule look like today? And how are you working your mindset and protecting it, elevating it today? George, you're not going to like my answer because my schedule today is crap. And I'm just going to be real with you. <laughs> I know a lot of you. I, I, that's what okay. I want. You ask me, I, like, people always ask me in these <laughs> interviews, what am I supposed to prepare for? Nothing. I want the raw Aaron Mailer. So I love it. That's you guys, great. this is like maybe the second time since March 13th that I've been ready at 8.30 in the morning, okay? Like I had a reason to get ready this morning. My days are not this, I don't want to say they're crap. They're totally different than what they were. I've got four kids that are doing homeschool. I sometimes get up in the morning and I'm helping kids with like fifth grade math until noon and I'm ready to pull my hair out because I'm like, let me teach you the easy way, the way that I right. learned it, you know? Um, it's totally different, but- I, I have to say this and I know I've touched on coaching and I don't want to like beat a dead horse, but if I did not have Judy right now checking in with me on Friday, she knows this. I have had some really hard weeks. I am a, a go, 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 go. The way that I do it all is I just don't stop. I just keep going. Um, this it has been really good to force me to have the slow time because I think I'm going to be able to balance a little bit better going back, but. So, so bottom line on the coaching though, hold on, is that, look, if it's not being coached by the, I mean, obviously anyone can go get coached by a manager. When we talk right. about coaching within the company right. and, and we talk about our, our secondary company, which is the ever sales system. We're talking about from that standpoint that you're being coached by top agents, yeah. top I'm coaches, coaches who have co like Judy's coach for 16 years. Right has been her life to elevating the lives of other people. Right. So, so it sounds like obviously someone checking in on you. So look, you devise, I presume you devise, look, if you're not getting coaching from us, you got to get coached by someone, right? An accountability Bottom partner, line is you got to get coached. Obviously, like, I think there's an element to paying someone to coach you because there's an accountability there that isn't, I, I mean, I've been a manager, I've managed agents in my office and um, it's different with, when they're not paying for it and when you're not totally it's, different it's a different situation right i have had fridays where i've talked to her and it's like how'd you do this week well i didn't do so hot you know i'm i'm really struggling okay well let's totally 
we're fine. I've had days where it's like, what is your goal this week, Aaron? And we've decided it's to call one person a day. Like that is the schedule I've been on at times lately is call one person from your SOI a day. But I'll tell you what I have been doing that's been great and I've been really good at this is there are so many systems that we use in our business that when you get busy, get left by the wayside. If you have not been creating an SOI list or cleaning out your SOI list and going through your contacts and purging those systems from your laptop on the couch while you're watching Netflix, like my heavens, right. use this time to clean your business up. There is no better, there's never been a better time to get organization and wipe out the chaos in all of those systems that we use to stay in touch with people. And I've been really good. I mean, I've gotten so much done in that regard, just going through and cleaning house in, in that way. Um, to talk about your business right now. In the last 45 days, what have you achieved from a business standpoint? Listings um, taken, buyers under contract, closings that have occurred, listings under contract. Sure. It was so, just a perspective that, that people know that good, even with all of that chaos, right? Uh -huh. Even like you said, oh my gosh, you know, there's days that just seem not to make sense. But because you've set your intentions, because you have coaching in place, right. because you know where you're going, what does the last 45 days look like for you in regards to just raw actual business? So I know things are different in Utah. Um, and so I just want to be very clear. I understand that California is a different situation than Utah. We're lucky that our governor has a, a background in real estate. And so um, he kept our industry going for us, which I'm so grateful for. But I was able to close out everything that I had under contract during all of this. Nothing um, fell through or got canceled. I closed everything out. Um, a couple weeks ago, I listed two houses. They both had multiple offers and went under contract within the first week. I have a buyer that went under contract last week. I have buyers that I'm actively working with. I have three listings that are coming up. I have a land deal that will go live this week, 200 acres down by Moab, actually. I didn't plan oh, wow. on to do business down there, but I've met people in that town and um, I'm co-listing some land with an agent down there. So uh, here's what I have realized. People still need to buy houses. People still need to sell houses. People have lost jobs. And I've got people that have reached out to me since this started that moved here from another state that are going back home and they're selling right. their homes because yes. if they got a job back home. There's so much moving that you are still needed. A hundred percent still needed. Death, job loss, mm -hmm. uh, upgrades, first time home buyers. People have their home paid off. They look at this COVID virus as an opportunity. I mean, from VA buyers to you name it, man, there is opportunity abounding everywhere. And in all of the adversity, can we find, can an individual find the good? And the answer is you and I both know unquestionably. Yes. So talk about how you're protecting your mindset is we, we've got about five minutes left. Okay. Tell us how you're protecting your mindset. What are you doing to protect it and to elevate it? Things you're not doing now that you maybe were and things you're now doing going, man, I got to make sure I'm doing this because this is a big deal. And I know that coaching is a big thing to that, but what else would you say to that? No, it took me a minute to figure this out because I'm a huge, like I listen to Audible and podcasts and I'm in my car so much normally that that's where I get a lot of my um, brain food, right? Is just being in my car. Well, I haven't been in my car a lot. I've been at home a lot. And so- right. Um, I, I have really tried to, I don't make it to every morning ascent, but I've tried to go back and listen to morning ascents. I've tried to participate in what I can with what's going on within the company. And even if there have been times where I get in the last 15 minutes of a Zoom call, but that 15 minutes is just the little boost that I have needed that day to remember. And one thing that I've had to do is say, is just tell myself, Aaron, you have one hour a day that you can sit down at your computer. You can check in with some clients. You can work on your business for one hour a day. You can go in and you can reach out to people. That's usually about five people that I can contact in that hour. Um, because the business is out there, but if you're not talking to people, you're not going to know who needs your help, right? You have to keep communicating with people right now. I don't care if it's text, social media, how you're doing it, but you have to keep communicating with people so that you know who needs your help. People need to know that you're still in business. It, like the world thinks that everyone's out of business right now. You right. have to let people know that the you're me, in The business. media and, and other people 100%. are scaring people in action. Give you perspective. Believe. We've put, as of yesterday, 462 homes in mm -hmm. Utah since, since, in Utah since April 1st. So here it is the 30th. Right. 462 homes as of yesterday, we as an organization in Utah have put under contract. Right. Even with all the challenges that are going on on the, even the California side, 
129 homes have gone under contract. And in the last four weeks, those guys have been on the market, could be in the business, out of the business, in the business. And you look at the yo-yo, it is unbelievable. Combined, that is over nearly 600 homes. This group has put under contract because they've stepped forward and not living in their fear. And a lot of people are, how about this? A lot of people are saying how foolish it is that people would go out. But the fact is, is domestic violence is at all time highs. Suicide at all time highs. Absolute destruction mentally, emotionally. Guys, we have got to pull ourselves out, all of us, to recognize that life at some level goes on. Yes, be wise. Yes, use some of the social distancing measures that are necessary. But man, you cannot live in fear. You have got to step forward with gratitude in your heart. And as you're speaking, right, go serve people, call them, text them, video them, do something that shows your commitment to leading others. And to your point, making a difference, making a difference. Whatever you believe is, is what will be true for you. Whatever it is that you believe it's a hundred percent true for you. You, I, there are lots of people that believe something totally different than me right now. And it is so true for them. And it is weighing so heavily on them, the fear, the uncertainty, um, you know, just this, this, these things that they're telling themselves, well, I believe something right. totally different. And what that, I and that's what talks true. about, we talk about mastering the story, right? right? right. Mastering the story, right. masters your emotions and masters the actions you take. And so few people are like, like, I have people like, well, I don't like doing those affirmations in the beginning of the call. Well, you need to shorten them down. You, I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, every counseling session that one may have in their life, everything they, every conference we may attend, every coaching call we may go with, every friend that we sit down and talk to is about one, oh, I got two hey, fingers up, one thing, master the story. And it's about changing a better story. To your point, you said, if I just watch it for 15 minutes, I kind of get juiced. I kind of, because you change the story you're telling yourself to empower us. I Love just it. have to tell a quick story and I know we have to end. Please. Yep. I, it yeah, used to really bother me. I, I care what people think about me. I, I want to be an authentic, real person whose purpose is to serve and help other people and do anything for anyone. And I care when someone has a negative opinion of me or thinks that my motive was something other than it was. It hurts right. me. And I used to really struggle when if I would ever hear that, like, it, and it was usually like a family member or a friend, right? Those are the people that hurt us the most. But right, the people that you, who, care, that you care yeah, about their opinion. They know me well enough to know my flaws. Yeah. When they would point out my flaws, it would hurt. So it used to really bother me when I would find out someone had said something about me or, you know, here's something negative or some kind of feedback. And there was a particular situation where just, there, it was toxic. This happened a lot in this household. And I finally several years ago, I had to start telling myself, this is a reflection of them, not of me. What they say is a reflection of them, not of me. You guys, it took me like two years of repeating this mantra over and over and over again until I finally, one day, like they could say anything about me and I, I felt compassion and love for them. It took two yeah, years. You feel, you feel sorry for that person. I felt sorry. And I'm like, man, they just live in an awful place. So if you're right. struggling, if you're stuck somewhere and you're like, I don't know how to change my story. You guys make it sound so easy. I don't know how to change my story. My story, story is so real to me. What I, what I believe is so real to me. I don't know how to get out of it. It may not happen overnight, but you've got to figure out where the space you want to live in and what story you want to tell yourself. And you have got to start telling yourself that. Write it on a piece of paper, put it on your mirror, put it in your car, wherever. Repeat it to yourself over and over and over and over again. And I promise you, one day you will wake up and it will click and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I, I, this is true to me now. I don't know, it's my truth, I know it. I don't just believe it, I know it. And so don't give up, just keep pushing through until you get there um, and you will. That's awesome, Aaron. Aaron, you're one of my favorite people on earth. And uh, I wish we, I know many of us times we all hit Vegas and we'd all hit the, uh, the strip and have our strip <laughs> burger. Yes, the strip <laughs> burger, right? A lot of, yeah. There's a bunch of uh, agents on this. We always, you know, I, those are, those, that's where we really kind of connected and became friends with our group and going having uh, caramel shakes together, right? I mean, it was good it's times. It's a place now for when we do the ever sales system. That's right. That's right. That's you cool. know what? We've got our altitude and we're hoping that we can okay. get to Vegas. If not, we're going to do it in Utah, but either way, we're going to have some fun times this fall. So one, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank sure. you for the difference you make. Thank you for your friendship. 
not only to me, but to this entire company and the difference that you're making. And you are making one. And uh, make sure you go up to your chat line and uh, look at all your fan club because you got a lot of people who are uh, who are very positively impacted by your your influence. And again, she's in the Orem, Utah office. If you want to get a hold of her, of course, you can just call the main office or whatever. If you want to give your number, knock yeah. yourself out. I'll give you yep. my cell phone number and my email. Um, if a bunch of people text me today, give me till tomorrow to get back to you all. But my cell phone number is 801-888-9122. And my email is just Aaron Mailer at Gmail. And it's up on the screen. You can see where my name is. That's how you spell it, Aaron Mailer at Gmail. So hit me up. I would love to answer any questions and I'll figure out a way. Maybe I'll just have Danette or someone email out. It's like the most simple. So I'll give you some, some instructions with it, but how I track my business because it changed love everything it. for me. I so. love it. I love it, Aaron. So, so happy for you. And so happy to see your Thank success. You. And I know you're just getting started as you've been assembling properties and building wealth and providing uh, such great experiences for your clients. So thank you for making a difference to this company today. So have a great day. Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, you're, you uh, are going to do something fun for your Friday, which is your day off. So go do it's something. Friday? Fun. Not, <laughs> not today, tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, okay. It's Work Thursday. hard today. Kip, go out and kick butt and take names. All right, all all right, right, guys, let's do some affirmations. And then again, make sure you look at your chat because there's some fun things and some very kind things that people say. And thank you for making a difference today. Okay.